What would you do if one in three teenagers were already on the path to diabetes and the warning signs were almost invisible? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today, we're examining new CDC data showing that prediabetes now affects about a third of American adolescents, what that means for you, and how early choices can change the trajectory. I'm Ethan Foster. In this episode, we'll break down what prediabetes looks like in teens, why it's often missed, and the immediate steps you can take to reduce risk and restore energy. I'm Alara Skye. You'll hear how researchers defined prediabetes in adolescence, what the numbers actually show, and the specific actions, drawn directly from the report and analysis, that help you intervene before type 2 diabetes takes hold. Prediabetes means your blood sugar runs higher than normal, but not high enough for diabetes. In teenagers, it's usually silent. Some may notice fatigue, thirst, frequent urination, or blurry vision, but many feel nothing. That silence is the problem. By the time type 2 diabetes is diagnosed, damage has already started. Using NHANES data, researchers defined prediabetes as fasting glucose between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter, or an A1C between 5.7% and 6.4%. In 2023, they estimated that 32.7% of U.S. adolescents, about 8.4 million, were living with prediabetes. This is a nationally representative figure, so it reflects the broader reality, not a narrow sample. Risk isn't confined to one group. Being overweight, having a family history of type 2 diabetes, and being physically inactive are strongly linked with prediabetes. About 2.5% of teens had both an abnormal fasting glucose and an abnormal A1C, which points to more advanced dysfunction and a higher chance of progressing quickly to diabetes. Trends are moving in the wrong direction. When older data were recalibrated with updated methods, Adolescent prediabetes prevalence from 2005 to 2016 was about 28%. Today, it's nearly 33%. That shift represents millions more teens entering adulthood with impaired glucose control. Prediabetes is more than a diabetes warning. It raises the risk of heart disease and stroke. The CDC characterizes it as a signal that the energy system is under strain. Dr. Christopher Holliday emphasized that type 2 diabetes poses a significant threat to young people's health, and simple lifestyle changes, healthy eating and staying active, can make a meaningful difference in preventing or delaying it. To understand why this matters, consider what's happening inside you. Elevated glucose injures blood vessel linings, increases oxidative stress, and pushes your pancreas to produce more insulin. Over time, that workload erodes your ability to maintain normal blood sugar and moves you toward full type 2 diabetes. Energy production also falters. Your mitochondria convert glucose into usable energy. In prediabetes, insulin resistance limits glucose entry into cells. If mitochondria are already compromised, sugar backs up in your bloodstream while your cells remain underfueled. That mismatch drains your energy, dulls motivation, and accelerates progression from prediabetes to diabetes as insulin-producing cells stop functioning effectively. This isn't happening only in teens. In 2023, roughly 1.5 million adults were newly diagnosed with diabetes. The parallel trend suggests that adolescents with prediabetes today are tomorrow's diabetes patients, adding stress to families and healthcare systems unless you act early. Action begins at home clearing out ultra-processed foods and removing common vegetable oils, canola, soybean, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed, from your teen's diet is a direct step you can control. These oils are rich in linoleic acid and are tied to mitochondrial problems. Swap them for butter, ghee, or tallow in home cooking, and restructure snacks toward whole food options your teen will actually eat. Carbohydrates aren't the enemy. Mismatched choices are. Reintroduce carbs in a way your teen's system can handle. If there are digestive issues, start with gentler options like white rice and fruit. As tolerance improves, expand to root vegetables, beans, and whole grains. These choices support busy school days, sports, 
and stable mood without crashes. Daily life exposes your teen to additional stressors. Reducing contact with plastics and personal care chemicals and minimizing close-range device exposure are practical steps. Use glass or stainless steel bottles, don't microwave food in plastic, and keep the phone out of the pocket and off the nightstand during sleep. Framing this as a challenge, such as a low plastic week or phone-free sleep, helps adherence. Sunlight matters. You're not just after vitamin D. Daily sun exposure supports mitochondrial function through melatonin signaling inside cells. Encourage short, regular time outdoors, walking the dog, biking, or simply sitting in the sun after school. If your family has consumed a lot of vegetable oils, give six months of reduction before adding longer midday exposure, since those oils increase sunburn risk. Measurement keeps motivation high. Use the HOMAIR test to assess insulin resistance early. The formula is straightforward. HOMA IR equals fasting glucose times fasting insulin divided by 405 if glucose is in milligrams per deciliter or divided by 22.5 if glucose is in micromoles per liter, glucose is in millimoles per liter. A score below 1.0 is considered healthy. Higher values mean more resistance and a greater need for focus changes. You can use HOMAIR to track progress over time. Dr. Mercola shared a personal HOMA IR of 0.2 after incorporating additional carbohydrates into a low vegetable oil diet, illustrating that targeted adjustments can improve insulin sensitivity and overall metabolic performance when mitochondria are supported. Parents are pivotal. You shape the food environment, create opportunities for movement, set boundaries around screens and sleep, and champion routine checks of fasting glucose, A1C, and H-O-M-A-I-R before type 2 diabetes takes hold. Encourage small, consistent changes, celebrate incremental wins, and keep the focus on energy, mood, and performance that teens can feel. The bottom line is simple. Prediabetes is common, it's largely silent, and it's accelerating in teens. Yet it's reversible when you remove ultra-processed foods and problematic oils. Choose carbohydrate sources strategically. Reduce everyday toxins build in daily sunlight, and verify improvement with objective markers. Each step you take turns the warning light off and restores momentum toward health. Here's today's challenge. Replace one meal and one snack this week by removing vegetable oils and ultra-processed items. Add a 20-minute outdoor walk after school and schedule a fasting glucose, fasting insulin, A1C, and HOMAIR check within the next month so you can see where you are and what's improving. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.